So we're going to uh, finish the tip on this reed with my um, uh, ripple tip finisher. Has the uh, design that I want for the scrape machined right here. This ball copies that shape onto the blade, which cuts it into the reed. So to set it up, you need to do a couple things. The tip needs to be pretty closed on this machine so that there won't be any air pockets um, underneath the, the, the metal tongue and the reed. Um, if there is a pocket, it'll cut it too thin, so you don't want to do that. So you put it on up to the mark scribe there, and then put the little mandrel in place, tighten it down, and then just to be sure there's no air pocket, it's really good just to press down here to make the cane conform to the metal tongue that's underneath. And then, um, like a profiler, it's rotated by this mechanism on the left side, back and forth like that. So here's how we do this. Uh, to avoid cutting the corners off on this, there's a little danger of, of ripping the corner, it's really good to start off-center and to start actually not cutting anything off yet so you're sure that you're at the corner and then come in like this so cutting with my right hand rotating with my left using very gentle downward pressure on the reed and go all the way through I try to do overlapping cuts so my left hand doesn't do a lot of rotation per cut now to avoid cutting off the other corner I go past it and come back in. Like this and come back in. Okay. Generally, two passes is good enough to finish this. Again, I'm going to avoid finishing here. I'm going to go way out on the corner and come back in just to be very careful about that, that corner. Come back here. Same idea. Come back in. Gently until nothing comes off. Okay, that's that's good. Now to, to uh, get the other side going, we take it off, pinch it shut again, and flip it over and put it on the tongue again. Put the mandrel in to stabilize it. Tighten that down. And press down here so that that air pocket is disappearing. Same idea. Start way off center. Gradually come in. When you get to the other corner, stop, come off the corner like this. Come back in. You should avoid any damage to your corner. Same idea here. Probably not much to do here, but we'll try anyway. Just a little bit more coming off. Okay, so now we're done. However, I think you'll notice that when you take this off, the tip is really open and really, really uh, gaping. So a certain amount of manual massaging is helpful here to see how the, the reed uh, can be kind of put back into a normal tip opening. Notice the wire pops open on its own, so that flattening is, is temporary. Generally, I don't have to re-round the wire after doing that. So that's how the, the reed uh, should look when it's finished. On the, 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 the measurements here will be within a thousandth or two of an inch of finished measurement. I always leave a little margin for um, softer cane and for adjustments. Okay, so there are a couple of things you need to know when you are finishing the blade. First of all, you need to know where you're starting from. So it's a really good idea to take a, um, a profiled piece of cane and run it under your dial indicator and mark down the thicknesses that you're starting with. That way you know how much to take off and where to take off. Um, so I think that's, that's very helpful to do. So with, with that in mind, I do know that my tip finisher puts things thickness-wise into a finished state 
with slightly thicker measurements for the first uh, you know third of the reed blade, approximately from where my finger is up to the tip. So I've got a little margin for scraping here, especially I think at the very tip where we need to get that almost razor thin, like a knife edge. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and do some of that work. And the important thing to remember here is never to move the tool for the contour of the reed, but to move the reed itself. That way your scrape will be more accurate. And the way to scrape with a reed knife is to use your free thumb as a, uh, an anchor and then rotate your wrist like this. That's the way you'll get the best, uh, the best most accurate scrape. And move the thumb up or down on the reed depending upon where you're, where you're scraping. So basically what I'm going to do is just take um, and work in this area above the pencil mark to enhance that thumbnail shape to start off with. This is the characteristic that's common to all German scraped reeds. So what I'm saying here is applicable to many reed styles. So I start a little back behind that area to blend in and always finish your scrape at the plaque and scrape with the grain not across the grain so straight front to back scrape move the plaque over to provide a little safety for the edge of the, the reed and you hear that little clicking sound that tells you that you've got the very tip in your scrape that's important because it's very easy to stop your scrape just before the tip and then to dig a little ledge right in here and have it suddenly thicken as you finish your tip. Um, that's very hard to correct. So if your scrape always goes to the tip uh, and clicks on the plaque, you'll avoid that problem. Next thing, just flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. Draw on the reed if you find that helpful. Start over on the corner. Maybe if you're left-handed, you'd start over on the other side. I start over here. I move the knife up as I go to the center of the tip, and then I move it back down as I go to the other side. So I, I follow that uh, thumbnail contour. Okay. Now the other thing that's very, very important to do is to sandpaper that tip when you're finished so that the the areas are smooth and some of the high spots are taken out. Um, the best way to use sandpaper is to fold it like a straight edge here. Put your finger on top and keep the plaque stuck out on the side like this again for safety purposes and then to sandpaper back and forth like this and go on and off the plaque. Okay. Again try to stay in that thumbnail area slide it over to uh, support that corner and go back and forth like that. Notice when your sandpaper has become embedded with cane. That's no longer an abrasive surface so you don't want to use that. You can either tear that off or just move over to another side which is what I'm going to do for this this side here. Okay. Um, this is 400 grade sandpaper. If you're in a hurry you can use 320. Just don't do so many. Then finish with a little 600. 600 is more of a polishing sandpaper than it is an abrasive. Um, so again, same idea. Fold it, use it as a straight edge, on and off the plaque like this. Working to get that knife edge at the tip. Same thing on the other side. Move in a little bit on the sandpaper so you're using a fresh part of it. Move it over like that. And that's pretty good for your tip. Um, I'm going to now finish the uh, collar area and work on the rails. My profile is a single barrel profile, so that means that the part right here is just as thick as over here. This is not thinner on my profile, so I'm going to need to work it back here. I'll, I'll draw the area I'm going to work on. I'm going to work on this rail area here and over here, and I'm going to straighten out the ledge back here that I on most German scraped reeds, there's a pretty quick thickening as you move from tip to heart, and then a very, very gradual, if any, increase in thickness from here back to here. 
However, a profiler cannot put a right angle in here and make a ledge. The profiler is a scraper and so it takes always a few fractions of an inch for it to get down to uh, a good level. So generally speaking on most, most profiles you need to do some work right in here uh, to get that, that ledge in there. Okay. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. And I like to use a file. Now this is not ne absolutely necessary that you use a file for this. Some people use a razor blade or even the reed knife and that's fine too. There are many ways to do this successfully. I use a file um, because it's quicker uh, and if I use my thumb as a guide I can make a nice straight cut. So I want you to notice something on the file. Do you see where there's, there's cane shavings here? That's from using the file like a knife and that's your first cut that you want to make. You want to make your first cut like this. So hold the reed on uh, the edge of the table, in the corner of the table, putting the, the, the table edge in between wire one and wire two. That'll give you better support. Put your thumb up here as a stop, and then use only the very edge of the knife to score a mark like this. And notice how I'm moving the cane on a, a reed, and I'm not moving the file. Okay, that's very important. That'll make for a more accurate reed making, okay, more accurate scraping. That's your first cut. So to file properly, you want to make a side cut and then sweep out into the area you're, you're, um, you're trying to work on. The, the, the side cut gets you down to the level you want to remove, and the sweep cut goes out into the area that you're working on. I love having a nice handle on my file too. These are cheap little handles you can buy in a, a hardware store. I'll go over here and do this other side because on my finished reeds I need to have this area be thinner right here than the center and thinner over here. So I'm going to do more work on these rails over here than I am going to do right here. I also want to have my dial indicator close at hand so I can check my work. And I'll finish the area in the center like this, and notice I'm rotating the tool or the reed like this and not the tool. Okay. So now if I bring the dial indicator into the picture and measure it, I'll just put it all the way to the collar of the reed. Just put it all the way in there. That's a really good 35 thousandths of an inch is a really good um, uh, finishing point of thickness for your first scrape. That gives you a little margin. My finished reeds fall anywhere between 30 and 32 or 33 thousandths. Um, so I'm going to leave a little margin there for, for the possibility that the cane is soft. Okay. So copy and paste onto the other side, right? So the, the best way to check your work um, when you're working on the rails of the reed is to put the um, plaque in. and slide it out so it's sticking out and you can see then um, how thick those rails are. Okay, so This is an unfinished reed. I've done no work on this one. So now I'm going to replace it with one that I have finished. And you can see those rails are much thinner and there's a, a decent taper on that, that reed. Now you can look also under the under the light um, to see the silhouette, but I think uh, shoving the plaque outside of the rails like this is the best way to uh, check your work. Okay, so the the other thing that's extremely important is to move the tip opening from closing all at once, like a uh, a garage door that just slams shut like that, towards one that closes from sides to center like that. This allows um, you to make register changes better, also to have control of the pianissimo on the reed and many other things. The color of the reed is, is appropriate when it closes like that. So that's a very important distinction to make. Mm -hmm.